In the town of Santa Rosa, there once lived a couple named Hugo and Imelda. Every meal time, they quarreled over the core of washing the dishes. Imelda would scold Hugo if he refused to wash the dishes. Sometimes, she would become angry and call him names. And if he talked back, she would get coconut midri broom and chase him with it. He would run to the house of his compadre and hide there till his wife's anger had passed. The neighbors familiarly called Imelda, Kamaldang, and Hugo, Kaugong. One day, just as they were finishing their lunch, Kaugong announced, I'm not going to wash the dishes anymore. Who say so? I say so. I worked so hard in the field this morning. I'm not going to wash any dish. And who, Mr. Hugo, is going to wash these dishes? You. You are the woman. You should do all the housework. And what do you do? You tie the carabao in the ridge of the field. And then you lay down on the grass to watch it race. You call that hard work? I cook, clean the house, wash your clothes, scrub the floor. I do all the things that only slaves should do. And yet, you even refuse to help me to wash these dishes. You! You little man! Stop! Don't strike me! Come out! Come out from under the table, you lay, coward! Lay down your broom! Alright, alright. And what you have to say? Let's stop quarreling over the plates. Let's have a wager. The first one of us will speak after I said begin will wash the dishes always. Only that? The first one who talks will always wash the plates and bowls and pots and pans always? Right. If you ever say just one word to me or to anybody or to anything after I had said begin, you will always wash the dishes. That's easy. I can keep my mouth shut even for a week. You can't. You even talk to your heart. Are you ready? Begin! We both fell silent. We sat at the table looking at each other across the unwashed plates and bowls and spoons. He did not like to leave each other for fear that one would talk to himself without the other's hearing. They sat there just staring. Soon, the hut began to mew for its food. Neither Kamaldang nor Kaugong paid attention to its mewing. The cat jumped upon the drying dishes to lick the leftovers. Kamaldang did not drive the hut away. Neither did Kaugong. The cat licked the pot and pan on it, overturned a kettle, spilled its contents, and went to lie down under the table. Kaugong pretended that nothing had happened. He continued to sit still, and so did Kamaldang. Soon, it was getting late in the afternoon, but they went on sitting mutely at the lunch table. Their eyes were tired from staring hard to each other. Tears began to roll down their cheeks. Kaugong's shirt became damp with his sweat. Kamaldang's sweat gathered on her forehead and trickled down to the sides of her face and fell drop by drop to her breast. Compadre Ugong! O compadre! O comadre ang maldang! Yu! O comadre! Compadre ang Ugong! May I borrow your axe? Kamaldang did not answer. Kaugong looked at her silently. Perhaps, nobody is at home. But, why did they leave the ladder at the door? This will remove the ladder when they got away. Well, I'll just get the axe and return it later. When the neighbor went to the bamboo ladder, he was surprised to see Kamaldang and Kaugong sitting silently at a table where the plates had dried up with the leftovers. He hurried toward them. Kaugong neither moved nor talked. The neighbor repeated this question. He shook Kaugong's shoulder. Kaugong let him shake him, closing his lips tighter. 
the neighbor turned to Kamal Dang. Speak to me, Comadre! Comadre, what happened? Did you eat something poisonous? Some food that will has made you dumb? Comadre, Comadre! The neighbor was alarmed. He did not get the axe but ran out to the rest of the neighbors. He told them that something terrible had happened to his compadre Ugong and compadre Maldang. The neighbors gathered at Kamaldang's dining room. They took turns trying to make them speak. But the two continued to sit staring at each other in silence. Kamaldang looked at her husband threateningly for a moment then closed her eyes. Kaugong knew that she did so to avoid looking at the neighbors. He also closed his eyes and ignored everyone who had come up to his house. Kamaldang was very angry with her compadre's interference but she dared not to speak her mind. She pretended to be asleep. The compadre was very much worried. He ran to the village herbman. The herb man came and when he saw the motionless, silent husband and wife sitting at the table, he declared that they were bewitched. He spread a woven bad mat in the center of the sala and asked the bewitched couple to lie down. Kaugong obediently lay down and closed his eyes. He curled up and went to sleep. But Kamaldang refused to get up from where she sat at the dining table. Ah! The spirit that has taken possession of her is very stubborn. I must break its spell. This represents the lost spirit of the couple. All right. Come home to your body now. Come, Evening fell on the Pride and Village. Frightened right because the herb doctor said that the spell might be cast on some other villagers besides Kaugong and Kamaldang. He called to the bewitched couple softly at first, and then louder, but became tired so she reclined against the bamboo wall. This is the first witcher of its kind that I met here. By their silence, I believe that they're dead. Their spirits! Driven away by the witch, have left their bodies. The only thing to do in order to keep their soul in peace and to prevent the witchery crap from spreading among us is to bury them.
the herdman ordered some of the men to look for birds and make two coffins immediately before the malady would go to them. In no time, the two coffins, made of rough planks hurriedly nailed together, were finished. The woman began to weep for Kamaldam. She had leaned rigidly against the back of her chair, closed her eyes, and shut her lips tight. The herb man asked the men gathered around to lift the couple into the coffin. I'll bury them at sunrise. Some of us have to stay from the wake of the dead. The man easily lifted Kaugong and places him inside his coffin. Surely, he thought to himself, he would win the wager. He would not be afraid of being buried. Why, he would just get cut of the grave when the neighbors were gone. He thought everything going on was great fun and he was enjoying himself. How he would frighten them all when he returned from his grave. The herbman approached Kamalda. Although her eyes were closed, she had been listening to his directions. She was afraid that he would surely force her into the coffin if she did not tell him to go away. But she did not want to talk. She hoped her husband would object to the men's lifting her into the coffin. Surely, Hugo will not let me bury tomorrow. Ah, I'm afraid to sleep in the coffin tonight. No, I'll not let them lift me into it, she thought to herself. But she did not hear Kaugong speak. She opened her eyes just as the herbman, aided by two other men, put his arms around her to lift up from her chair. Kamal Dang pushed the men, got up to her feet, and shouted, Don't touch us! Get up! Get out of my house! Shame on you for coming here meddling our lives! She come first! We are the wager! Now she will always wash the dishes! I won! 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 I